Hello guys. So we'll continue our discussion on persistent data. Uh, we talked about shared preferences last time. Uh, today we'll look at an actual you know, SQL database, uh, which we manage using the room library in Android. Um, and in the process, we'll also look at the Android thread model and recycler view, uh, two fairly important topics, um, which you know are useful beyond SQL uh, database apps. So first here is a, the the app we'll develop today uh, you know very basic from the point of view of um, you know use and comparison with other apps um, but a good starting point for these concepts um, and as uh, you'll see later you know through the uh, assignments and all you'll develop this further okay so uh, this is a journaling app uh, the user will record uh, what he or she does, um, you know, maybe throughout the day, throughout the week and stuff like that. So an event and um, in the current like version 0 0.1, let's say uh, it's only the duration of that event. So um, here we have this floating button uh, plus to add a journal entry. You do that and you open a second activity like this. Uh, you record your journal entry here with the title, let's say, you know, Donut Falls Hike and duration is in minutes. Um, so it's an integer, uh, you know, 150 minutes, little like two and a half hours, let's say. Uh, then I click save and I get back to the main activity, which now shows Donut Falls Hike with this 150 over here, right? So after adding several of those, uh, you could see a thing like this. So I spent 90 minutes on preparing uh, preparing for CS4530, uh, two and a half hours for the hike, and you know two hours I spent watching a movie and things like that. Um, so the the view we see here, where each item is listed, I'm I'm pretty sure you have seen that in several apps, say an email app um, or the messenger list app, where you can scroll up and down. Uh, that's called the recycler view. So we'll learn a little bit about that uh, later in this uh, in this topic, okay? But yeah, this is the app we are going to build. Um, there is a database at the back end. There is a table called a journal uh, table, and it has these entries with a title and a duration and a primary ID, uh, sorry, primary key uh, for now, okay? Um, so that's what we'll build, uh, and we'll learn a lot of concepts in that process, as I said. Uh, and later you'll develop this app into something um, some more interesting. Um, okay, so first of all, um, so Android comes with uh, an inbuilt SQLite library and it is possible to implement that SQL database directly. In fact, until recently, you know, that used to be uh, the way to do things. You know, People would write SQL code uh, and deal with the database underneath and so on. Um, but a key issue, I mean, the, the most important thing about Android development is understanding uh, the life cycle uh, of uh, the activities and you know, other components like fragments, uh, services, and the application itself. So uh, if the app does not handle these complex life cycles uh, properly, then um, there could be memory leaks, there could be performance issues, and so on, as we have seen. I and mean, we could uh, we, we spent some time uh, learning about the configuration changes and um, losing the UI state, right? So um, to, to take care of those issues, it is recommended that um, you implement what's called the Android architecture components, okay? So we'll learn about the Android architecture components as well in this, uh, in this, in this topic. So what are they? They're at a very high level. They are libraries for some common tasks like, like, like lifecycle management and data persistence. Um, you, you have already seen something from this part of the Android world, and that is the view model. Okay, view model is a lifecycle aware component which lives outside of the activity lifecycle and manages the data for the UI um, over the uh, configuration changes, right? Um, so yeah, there are some other components like that as well. And the room library um, is one of those. Uh, the point is to help you structure your app in a way that is robust, testable, and maintainable with less boilerplate code. So giving you the freedom uh, to, to choose, but at the same time having these um, uh, you know, lifecycle aware 
components at at your uh, disposal uh, behind the scenes. All right. So here is a um, common structure. Okay, I think I messed up my animation here. All right, let's start with this. Okay. So here is a um, like a common structure, a big picture for all the uh, architecture components. So first of all, there is a you know underlying database. Um, most meaningful apps will have some sort of database and uh, uh, Android supports SQLite uh, underneath. So that is still going to be there, but we'll create a layer on top of that. Okay. So uh, then you have entities. Entities are annotated classes uh, that describe database tables. Um, so these are Java classes. Uh, they look and feel exactly like a standard Java class. There can be constructors, there can be setters and getters. So, you know, very much like the model classes we have seen, um, but with certain annotations that indicate uh, to the Android architecture and Android um, um, OS that you want to create a, uh, a database table out of this. And we'll see an example soon. Um, to access these, we have DAOs, data access objects, which are basically mappings of the SQL queries to functions or you know, um, and methods in Java. And all three of them together, they form the room database. So room is the name of the library we are using. And this creates the database layer for you on top of the underlying SQLite database. So we'll be dealing with this, this layer and not directly with an um, SQLite uh, database uh, in the raw form. Um, in the layers above this. So what's about the database? Uh, there is a repository. Now repository is not part of the room library, but it is recommended to do it this way um, because repository is what becomes the access point for uh, your app. That is your view model basically. And then you can have the same uh, repository class um, deal with the local database or something on the cloud or on a web server and so on. So it's going to be our single point of control for multiple data sources. Um, and repository accesses the DAOs and that's how it deals with the database underneath. Yeah. And then the view model accesses the repository. Um, as we know, view model holds all the data needed for the UI and it hides the backend from the UI. We have seen it in our simple non-database examples already. But you, you see something new, something different here, and that is the live data. So live data is a way of um, basically caching the latest version of the underneath underlying data in a life cycle aware way. Okay. So um, we will build observers um, on the on this live data part, which which will you know, signal our UI if there are any changes uh, and we can make the changes in the uh, UI immediately. So yeah, on top of this, you have the UI controller, which is activity or fragment. We have seen activities, fragment is the very next topic. Um, and in fact, a continuation of the discussion we are having here will be there soon. Okay, so we know uh, high level what they do, they display the data and also any uh, events on the UI, uh, you know, the controllers are responsible for taking care of those. And then, yeah, this is the uh, observer uh, pattern. So any changes on the live data are notified to the UI through an observer pattern. So an observer pattern is a, um, is, is, is a callback essentially. And uh, the alternative is polling. So the UI controller keeps looking at the data again and again, every few seconds, which is going to cost a lot in terms of performance. Um, so the observer patterns, uh, you know, where if, there, if anything changes, a thread lets the UI know that something has changed. So that's, that's the pattern we are, um, I mean, the room uh, library and the architecture components, they uh, already implement, and we are just going to um, make use of that. Yes, so this is uh, the big picture of the architecture components. Uh, all, uh, all of our uh, apps, uh, you know, all meaningful, significant, robust, maintainable 
testable apps um, should have this structure. And that's what we are going to start with today. So here is the concrete example of what we are going to do. Um, we'll have the SQLite database and we'll have uh, only one entity for now. We will call it the journal entry. That's one entry in the journal. Um, and we'll have a journal entry DAO to access it. Um, and the repository can, the journal repository can then, uh, can, can basically call methods on the journal entry DAO. Um, in the view model, we'll have a live data of list of journal entries, which is what you saw on the activity after some entries were added to it. Okay. Um, there is a main activity, which has the observer and a journal entry list adapter. So this list adapter goes with the recycler view, uh, which is basically responsible for showing the, uh, the, the appropriate portion of the list in an efficient way. And the main activity interacts with the add entry activity, which is the second activity that you saw um, on the UI, uh, where you actually enter uh, the title and duration of uh, the of the journal entry. And then here is the uh, observer callback, which helps update the um, uh, the UI if there are any changes to the data. So let's see uh, how we create each of these. So uh, before starting, create a new project, journal app, start with an empty activity. Um, don't worry about the UI right now. Um, first, we'll build all the things that we saw in that picture, okay? But yeah, you'll have to go and make changes to the Gradle um, uh, build process. Basically, we need the room um, library. So here are uh, here is the code and here is a neat trick to use a variable for room version if the same version number is going to be used multiple times. Um, this is very neat, but even otherwise you, know, you can use it. Okay, so we need Android X room um, runtime. And then this is the annotation processor for the annotated classes. Okay, so with that, we can get started. All right, so first the entity. So we are here at journal entry and uh, as we saw, it's an annotated class to represent a table in the database. So this is what it will look like, okay? As you can see, it's a plain Java code except for the annotations. Um, public class journal entry. There is a UID which is private, the title which is a private string field and duration is a private int field and you have a constructor uh, which constructs from the title and the duration and assigns a random UID from the uh, you know from the standard uh, I mean from the Java library um, that you may be familiar with already. Um, now let's look at the interesting or new stuff here. Um, so first of all, you have the name of the database to be created. Um, if you skip this table name here, um, you'll get the get a table generated with the class name itself. So it's just a matter of choice. Um, each entity must have a primary key and it cannot be null. So you must use primary key and non-null for the primary key field. Uh, the other one column info, which you see on title as well as duration, um, it's just the name of the column that you want in the database. Again, if you skip this, it will create, um, uh, a, a, uh, it will create a column with the field uh, name, variable name as the column. And I didn't want my columns to be M title, M duration. So I'm specifying ID, title, duration, etc. Okay, uh, yeah, this creates a unique ID and uh, getters and setters are not shown, um, but you know that's pretty standard. Okay, so you have created your entity now. Next, the DAO, okay. Um, the DAO is an annotated class that specifies the SQL queries um, and connects them with the method calls. Um, interesting thing, um, and the compiler in Android Studio checks for any SQL errors. So on the last slide you saw, I've given uh, the table name um, as, yeah, oops, sorry, as journal underscore table, right? Um, or the column is title and um, duration and so on. So if for some reason, 
if I write a query which does not use this these proper table or column names, then I'm going to get a compile time error, which is really great. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, here is a simple DAO, um, and a DAO has to be an interface or an abstract class, um, and you don't really have to implement it. The room library takes care of implementing it. If you use the appropriate annotations, it will know exactly what to do. So you just have to provide this interface for methods um, on, on, on this DAO. So here we have just two methods. There is an insert method to insert the entry and it is annotated with an insert. Um, so if you do that, then it knows exactly what uh, SQL code to execute. Um, you know, if it's a plain insertion uh, without any additional checks, etc. So you, you don't have to do anything else. Um, this, these two lines at insert and the method call uh, are going to create the appropriate underlying structure for you to insert an entry in the database. Coming to the next one, um, get entries is get all entries, sorry, is where you want to get all the entries in the general table, right? So here um, you have to specify what exactly you want. So we say an SQL query, select star from journal table and order them by title ascending. Um, of course, the order um, part is optional. Um, I'm just having it so that we always see uh, an ascending list um, based on the title. Um, so this will return a list of journal entries, right? But it's encapsulated in a live data further. So you can use at query for any custom query. It could be you know, um, filter, join, all of those, uh, they do work here. Yeah, um, so the list of journal entries is further put into a live data um, for updating um, the UI via observer in the higher layers, uh, as we'll see in a minute. Okay. All right. Um, Yes, let's pause this video here. We'll come back with the room database in the next one. Thank you.